Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to show you how to bring some holiday cheer to your porch with your very own wood sled style sign. So let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to our wood sled kit tutorial. I'm just gonna quickly go over the things that should have been included in your kit. Starting with the sled pieces, you should have the base of your sled already put together, and then two runners. One of mine's already painted, but yours are gonna look like this. So two of these, you should have one crossbar piece like this, and then one, this is like the kind of steering control of the sled, one of those. You should also have a regular paintbrush for painting your runners. You should have a sponge for staining your base and then two foam brushes for your stencil, as well as some sandpaper for distressing, a rag and some wax. Your wax container might be a little bit smaller than mine. And then your stencil, whichever stencil you picked to go with your project, your paint colors, today I'm gonna to be using cranberry sauce, dark roast, and crinoline. And then you should also have some tools for attaching your sled together. So nails were included, but you don't have to use a hammer and nails to put your piece together. So a hammer was not included. Wood glue was also not included, but is really helpful for attaching the pieces of your sled together and making sure that it's nice and um, sturdy when it's outside. The other thing that you might wanna use is a brad nailer. So this is a battery operated brad nailer. It's gonna be really easy and quick for attaching your pieces. You might have one that hooks up to an air compressor that you can use as well. Um, you're gonna want brads that are about an inch, maybe three quarters or an inch long so that it goes through the pieces of plywood to attach together, probably an inch is best. Um, so yeah, so if you have any questions about attaching that, I am gonna show how to attach it. I'll show both ways. That way you can kind of see which one is easier and decide which one works best for you. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the very first thing we're going to do is stain the base of our sled. This is where our stencil design is going to be placed. You wanna make sure that your painting sponge is damp with water, but not soaking wet. So I usually have a container on hand where I keep a little bit of water in there to kind of dip back into if I need to. The water is gonna work with the paint to kind of spread it on evenly and thinly. That way it looks like regular stain, but it's gonna dry a lot faster. So all you need to do is get your base color in a little dish or bowl. You're gonna dip your damp sponge into the base, and then you're gonna start working that across the board. Now the more paint that you have on your sponge, the darker your color is gonna be. So if you're feeling like the color's too light, you can go back over it again with a little more paint. If you're feeling like the color's too dark, you can use a dry or a, a spot on your sponge that doesn't have any paint and kind of work that out a little bit. So you just wanna make sure that it's pretty even all the way across. Now, if it's gonna bother you that inside you can see these slats that are unfinished, what you can do if you have a small paintbrush at home, or even if you have like a Q-tip, you can put a little bit of paint on there and kind of get down inside those pieces. Same thing with the kind of inside of the base right there. Once it's up, you're gonna have shadows in there so it won't be as noticeable. Main thing is that the base of the sled, the color is pretty consistent and even. And then you can use your sponge to kind of go around the outside edges of the base as well. This is kind of more of a swiping or padding motion, especially on the spots where it's rough. Just make sure you've got all your color on there really well. And then we're gonna let this dry for about 10 minutes. All right, so while our base for our sled is drying, we're gonna go ahead and shift gears and we are going to paint the runner pieces for our sled. So you're gonna want your runner color in a dish and then the large brush that came in your container. We're gonna do two coats of paint on every piece and every side. So this one's already been painted. This is two coats on this side 
This is just one coat on this side, so you can see it's just a little bit lighter. If you want that nice, rich color, we're gonna make sure that we do two coats on each piece. The easiest way to do that is to do one coat on each side. We'll let it dry and flip it over and kind of keep that going. So you can expect this part of the kit to maybe take about an hour while you're letting all these pieces dry. You just wanna dip into your tray most importantly, we wanna make sure that this color is still going on kind of thin. That way we don't end up with drips going over the sides. And we're just gonna work on thinly putting a coat on every side of every piece. So on these rough cut edges, you might have to press down in there a little bit. Don't worry on the next coat, it's gonna fill it in even better. And then you will have the option to distress all these pieces once they're dry at the end if you wanna give them kind of more of a rough look. But if you're going for nice rich tones, two coats on each piece is gonna be great. All right, so once your pieces are dry to the touch, there's no color coming off on your hand when you're touching them, you are good to go. We're gonna do coat number two. This coat can be a little bit thicker than coat number one. We want the color to be nice and solid by the time we're done applying this coat. So it's okay if you have a little bit more paint on your brush. Again, same thing with those edge pieces. If you have to kind of push the paint in there to get in all those little cracks and crevices, feel free. Really wanna watch for drips on this coat since this is gonna be the final one. Any of those drips are gonna to have to be sanded out later on. So go ahead if it's dry and get started on coat number two. Okay, while our runner pieces are drying, we are going to work on the main part of our sled, the base of our sled, and getting that stencil on there. The first thing that we're going to do before we do any stenciling is take the fine grit sandpaper. That's gonna be the one that says 220 on the back. It's nice and smooth and light. Ooh, I got a little wet paint on my hand, so be careful. And you are gonna lightly sand over your whole piece. We wanna just smooth everything out so that if any wood lifted up while we were staining it, everything is nice and smooth so that the stencil sticks to it really well. So I'm gonna, have, gonna go ahead and sand over this for about 10 seconds. You're gonna to wanna to take a clean rag, wipe all the dust off. If you're wanting your sled a little more distressed than this, just know that you are gonna have a chance to sand this again later on if you really wanna rough it up and get that rustic look. So we just need to make sure it's nice and smooth that all that dust is off of there. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and grab our stencil. So this is a removable vinyl stencil that we're going to use to apply our design to the board. What you're gonna to wanna to do first is flip that over so that that grid backing is facing up towards you. You're gonna start by separating the white paper from the blue sticky layer. As you're rolling this white paper off, we don't want anything blue to be coming off with it. A lot of times like little pieces like the triangles and these snowflakes will try and pop out. We don't want anything blue to be on this white paper. So you're gonna go nice and slow. You wanna go in one direction across the design. So if something like this tries to pop out, just make a crease in the paper, push it back down in place, and then you're just gonna keep going across the design. So nice and slow, keeping an eye on that paper making sure nothing blue is coming off. And then once you get the paper all the way off the design, just go ahead and check 
make sure there's nothing blue stuck to it. And this is going to get discarded. Now that we have the paper backing off of our stencil, we are ready to apply our stencil to the board. There's no top or bottom for this base. You can choose whichever way you want it to go. The one thing you wanna remember is that the stencil is repositionable, so you'll be able to maneuver it around, but once you press it down, it's not gonna to wanna to move. So you wanna be really light with it when you're flipping it over. So we're just gonna pick it up and we're gonna kinda of quickly flip it over. We want to keep an eye on all the spaces where letters are kind of crossing over the slats, as well as the spacing between the edges of the board and the design. The nice thing about this Let It Snow one with the script font, it's very forgiving if it's not perfectly straight. But we really want to make sure, especially like this side of the T right here, that that's kind of over that slat so that we know what the design is trying to say. So go ahead and kind of maneuver this around where you want it to go. I think right there is gonna be great for me. And then you are going to need something that has a straight edge on it. So a credit card. I know a lot of people say that they have um, like scrapers for their pizza pans that they like to use. Anything that's got a nice flat straight edge that you can use to really smooth this down. And then just kind of keep an eye on too where the creases in your board are, the slats in your board. We want to be mindful of those that we're not pushing the vinyl stencil down in there. You just want it to lay right across the top, lay flat. So you're going to try and get as many of the bubbles out as you can. I'm pushing pretty hard. All right, and now that that's nice and tight, I'm gonna roll the clear tape off the top. Same as before, nothing blue coming off. Everything blue stays stuck to the board. There we go. All right, so now that we've got our design on there, we wanna smooth it down one more time. Make sure it's nice and tight to the board. And then we are going to grab our foam brushes. If you're gonna do everything in one color, you just need one foam brush. If you're gonna alternate colors, maybe do the snowflakes and something different, you are going to want two foam brushes for that. I am gonna be doing everything the same color. So I'm just gonna use one. If you have any other like chalk type paint at home, mineral finish paint, you can use that for this. Sometimes people ask about glitter. The only thing with glitter is that you're gonna wax over the top of this and that wax is gonna kinda take that glitter right back off. So what I would recommend is holding off until the very end, paint these a color, and then maybe at the end, go back and kind of touch them up with a little bit of glitter over top of the paint. So as far as the paint that's included in your kit, this is gonna be perfect. You're just gonna dot some of that paint off somewhere on the design. And then the technique for this is making sure that you're doing a very light sweeping motion, completely covering the shape. The reason that we wanna keep the paint light is so that the stencil gets sealed around the edges without paint bleeding down underneath. And doing a sweeping motion is gonna put the lightest amount of paint on there possible. You can see over here, if I'm stippling or pressing, that's putting on a lot of paint. That's gonna to be too much for this first coat. Especially over these snowflakes, we wanna make sure that it's nice and light. Now, as far as the slats go in between the base, I wanna just kind of go right alongside those or push your paint inwards like this, in towards each slat. You may find afterwards when you take your stencil off that there's a little bit of bleeding down on there there, but that's a pretty easy fix. We just wanna make sure that this first coat is paper thin across the whole thing. So each color usually requires about three coats of paint. If you're doing a light color to start, like if the base of your board was white instead of brown, and maybe you were painting red for your stencils, sometimes that needs a fourth coat just for those bright colors to dry over top of that white. But general rule of thumb is three. 
with a couple of minutes drying time in between. This first coat is gonna dry the fastest. And then once it is dry to the touch, we'll be able to start a second coat. So again, you just wanna find any spots where you maybe didn't get paint all the way across the shape and make sure that's filled in. All right, so we're gonna let this dry for about two minutes. As soon as we can touch it with no paint coming off, we're good to apply another coat and that coat's gonna be just a little bit thicker than the one before. All right, so now that we've got our third coat on there, we just wanna wait until the majority of this is dry to the touch, especially if this is your first time. If you're a pro at this and you are ready, you're just going to gently lift up that stencil. If there's any wet paint on the vinyl, you just wanna kinda of keep this lifted as you slowly pull it off. And if it rips as you're removing it, that's okay. It's actually easier to get it off in chunks than it is to try and get it off in one big piece. That way you don't have to worry about paint smearing as you go. And then keep in mind that anything inside of a letter is not gonna come off with the main section of the stencil just because it's not connected. We're gonna have to go in and pull those out separately. So that would be kind of like these little triangles inside the snowflakes here. We're gonna go ahead. All right, so we're gonna continue to remove the stencil. Getting all that vinyl off there. Again, if there's anything wet, you just wanna be careful that you don't smear anything as you're removing it. And if you're having a hard time getting these little pieces off, a toothpick is usually really helpful for kind of lifting up these little edges. I just kind of use my best fingernail to get those started. Toothpicks can sometimes gouge the wood, which we wanna to try to avoid. So all of the blue areas is what has to be removed. So anything that was vinyl. So again, if you notice anything that bled, I know we mentioned earlier, you're gonna have some spots that are probably gonna bleed. I have a little bit right here around that top corner of the O. That bled just a little bit. I'll show you how to fix that. We're just gonna go ahead and get all the rest of these pieces off here. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now that our paint is dry on all of our runner pieces, this is the time to distress these if you would like. I'm gonna sand my pieces down to make them look vintage. Um, I also have a couple of spots where paint's a little on the thick side that I wanna smooth out. So I'm gonna be using the fine grit. This is the 220, the smooth sandpaper. Same as before, you're just gonna lightly run it over. And just know that the harder you push in some areas with this, you are gonna start to see some of the bare wood show through. That's okay, that's kind of the look that I'm going for. I want that kind of rustic look, maybe a sled that's been sitting outside for a few winters. Or a vintage sled from back in your childhood. Okay. That's gonna be great for that piece. Now, if you have some pieces that are pretty rough and that fine grit just seems like it's not cutting it, then you're gonna wanna bring in the coarse grit. This is gonna go through the paint pretty quickly. So you wanna be careful with this because it can take it down to the bare wood pretty fast. This is gonna be ideal for any of those pieces that still feel pretty rough. You can also use this on the face of your piece. You just really wanna keep an eye on how much paint that's removing since it's gonna go down to the bare wood pretty fast. I'm gonna go ahead and get all these pieces sanded and then we'll be ready to start waxing.
All right, so now that we've got all of our pieces sanded, we're just gonna wipe off as much of that dust as we can. Once these are all dusted, we're gonna be ready to apply the wax. So depending on how hard you sand your pieces, you could have a little bit of dust or a lot. You can see mine's got quite a bit. So if you've got an old rag or some paper towels, like if you go through the included rags, just make sure that you keep going to try and get all of this off of there. All right, so I'm gonna switch over to a clean rag. And to wax your pieces, we're gonna wax all faces and sides. And then when we go to attach them, we're gonna choose the best looking face to have that um, be the one that's facing up. So you're gonna start with just a little chunk on a rag and you're gonna kind of buff that in. You want a nice thin layer over the whole thing. You want it to feel like buttery smooth. You don't want it to feel sticky or greasy. So if it feels really greasy, that means you've got a little bit too much on there. If you are going to be putting your piece outside, you really want to make sure that every part of this is waxed. That way, if it gets rained on or snowed on, you don't have to worry about any of your paint fading or any of the pieces of wood warping. So we want to make sure that whole thing is nice and covered. So kind of run your hand over it. Make sure it feels smooth. If it feels greasy, or you can kind of see where you're leaving fingerprints, that's a sign that it needs to get buffed in a little bit better. So we're gonna go ahead and do that on all of our pieces. All right, so now that our paint is dry, if you have anything that you wanna fix, you're gonna to wanna to use that fine grit paper, fold it up into a little point, and any of those areas where you have paint that doesn't belong, you can use that little point to kind of sand off those little spots. So I'm gonna round this out just a little bit better. I am gonna end up kind of distressing over the whole thing. So it's gonna be okay for me if there's a little bit of discoloration there, but if there's anything that you really wanna fix, just pull out a little bit more of that color that you started with, and you can touch up those spots. So if you're going for a distressed look, you can take that coarse grit, just go right over your whole design. You really wanna make sure that everything's dry though, because if this hits a wet spot, it's gonna smear it right across the board. So what this is gonna do is it's just gonna kind of smooth the design down a little bit. You might start to see some of that dark brown show through, which is gonna make it look vintage and distressed, but we're not gonna get too much of a distressed look with this fine grip. All right, so this is great too if you ended up having to do four coats of paint to get that color to dry really well. That's gonna be a nice thing to help kind of smooth that down. Now, if you're wanting more of a distressed look, switch over to your coarse grip paper. This is gonna take off a lot more of this white. And we're gonna see a lot more of that dark start to show through. You're especially gonna notice this around the slats in the board. So just kind of keep an eye on that. If you really don't wanna to remove too much paint in those areas, stick with just the middle of the slats. So we want everything to kind of look uniform. So just make sure that if you've got a lot of distressing in one area and not a lot in another, they kind of make those match. And then when you're done, we're gonna wipe off all the dust. If there's anything that you wanna fix or change, now's the time to do that. We're gonna put wax on next. And once we wax it, that's kind of the final step. You really don't want to paint over the top of wax. So just kind of make sure that everything's exactly how you want it. The wax is going to go on the top and then all the way around the edge. 
You don't have to put wax inside these slats if you don't want to. The other alternative to this is without the wax. You can kind of opt for no wax and you can spray like a polyurethane or a clear coat over to the top of this, which is gonna give it more of like a glossy look. And that's gonna really help protect it from fading and make it more water resistant too. The wax is fine for outdoor use, but if you prefer a clear coat, you can definitely do that. So I'm just gonna take a clean rag with a chunk of wax on there. And I'm gonna start buffing those chunks into the board. We want our board to feel nice and buttery smooth. We don't want the board to feel sticky or greasy. So you're gonna do some wax on there and then run your hand over it. If you can see, like if you do this and you can see where you're leaving fingerprints, that's a sign that it needs to be buffed in a little bit more. It's gonna dry in a matte finish and it's gonna start to soak into the paint. But leaving too much wax on there can make it feel kind of sticky or tacky. So just make sure that you're buffing that in really good. You're doing the edge of the board as well. If you end up with little balls of wax in between the slats, you can use a Q-tip to kind of drag some of those out. Then just double check, everything's nice and smooth. All right, and this is ready to attach. All right, so now that everything is painted and sanded and waxed, we are ready to move on to the assembly. So this is where you're gonna want your tools. Ooh, you're gonna want some wood glue if you have it. The first thing we're gonna do is we are going to attach the base of the sled to the two main runners. So those are the longest pieces that come with the sled. The way that those go on, so you've got a long edge down here and then a shorter edge down here. Those are going to sit right up underneath the edge of the base right here. So we're gonna kind of hold this one in place. This might be a good step if you've got a friend to help you get these attached. Woo! I don't have a friend with me here tonight. So if you've got someone that can kind of help hold these in place for you while you're attaching them, that's gonna be your best bet. Or if you've got something that you can kind of prop underneath this, once you get them in place, it's usually pretty pretty easy to keep them there. But if you've got something that's kind of the same width of your sled, you can go ahead and attach that or put that underneath to help prop it up. So what we wanna do is we wanna kind of attach or put some wood glue down anywhere where the runners are gonna hit underneath this. So if it's easiest to kind of lift it up just a little bit and put a little dollop under there, I'm gonna put a little bit down here and a little bit down here to hold it in place. Now on one side, I'm gonna do hammer and nails. And on the other side, I'm gonna use the brad nailer. It's just so you can kind of see the difference between those. Woo. And if you have wood glue that kind of runs out underneath, that's okay. The wood glue is gonna dry clear. You wanna make sure that you have the same space hanging out the bottom of the sled as well. So this one looks like it needs to come out just a little bit more. So on this side where I've got the nails, you can kind of see that I've already hammered a couple of nails in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very lightly just kind of tap this one in. So I got them started before I attached the pieces together. There, now that's gonna be a little bit sturdier for us. So there's a little bit of wood glue kind of popping out right here. Since we waxed this already, that's gonna be easy for us to just kind of wipe right off. Again, the wood glue is gonna dry clear, so don't worry if you get, if you get a little bit spilling out. So then you just kind of wanna repeat that along here with those nails. Once you've got a few in there, it's gonna get a lot sturdier. 
really we just want to get kind of the four corners in and that's going to help us hold everything else together while we get it assembled. So with the brad nailer, I'm going to come right in here in the top and just kind of make sure that I'm centered on that runner and pop a brad right in there. The reason that I like the brads versus the regular nails is that you can barely see where those little brads went in there. Now they are smaller, so they're not as sturdy as the thicker nails, but they do a great job for holding it together and they're not as noticeable. So I'll usually use more of these than I would of the regular nails. Now we've got that on there that's pretty sturdy. So again, if you have someone that can help you get that started, that's gonna be your best bet. And once you get a couple nails in there, it's gonna be even easier to attach the rest of them. So again, if you're using regular hammer and nails, get those started before you piece it together. And then you can add a few more. And if you wanna go back, if you wanna go back and kind of touch these up with a little bit of paint, you can definitely do that. That way they're not as noticeable. So that's the difference between the brads and the regular nails. Make sure that these are nice and flat. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and attach the rest of it with the brad nailer. All right, so our crossbar is gonna go right up here towards the top of our sled. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue up there to start. Again, I am gonna be using the brad nailer for this part, so I don't have to worry about starting nails in. I'm just gonna lay that on there. Get my brads attached. Now, if you are having a really tough time when you're attaching this first part, do your crossbar first, and then you can go back and put that base on top of it. Sometimes that'll kind of help hold everything together. But so if you skip that part, if you're having a hard time getting that on there, that's just a little helpful tip. And then this part, our little steering column, we just wanna make sure that we've got kind of the same width coming out side to side. So if you need to use a ruler to measure that, or if you have something handy that you can use to kind of measure. So mine needs to go that way just a smidge. You also want to make sure that you've got the same amount of spout, uh, space top and bottom here. So we can use this little guy to measure in there. Make sure everything's good. It needs to come back this way just a smidge. Pop a little glue down in here. And we'll be ready to nail. All right, so again, if you wanna go in and kind of fill in any of the holes, you can do that. And then if you are going to add a twine hanger, I just like to tie that twine around the top part of the sled right up here. You can also add a bow on there if you like. Tuck that piece right back around there. You can make the twine as long or as short as you like. If you are going to hang it with the twine, I recommend using a piece that's pretty sturdy, maybe even a wired twine. I'm just gonna kind of tuck mine right back around here. There we go. All right, your sled is ready to display. Just add a bow if you like, and it's all done. Thanks for crafting with us.